This video is an introduction to if statements in R, and if statements allow us to only execute a particular block of code if a certain condition is met. So far, we've used conditional statements to filter things. One of the other things that we can do with these conditional statements is use them to control the flow of the program using something called an if-else statement. And the way these if statements work is they check to see if a conditional statement is true, and if it is, then they execute a particular block of code, and if it's not, then they don't execute that block of code. And so in concept, in pseudocode, what these look like is the keyword if, a set of parentheses, and then we'll have our conditional statement in here. And so we're saying basically if the conditional statement is true, and we'll just replace that with a conditional statement when we actually do this curly brackets, and remember these curly brackets define the block of code that's executed together, and so this will be the block of code that's executed if the conditional statement is true, and then we'll do something in here. We'll have one or more lines of code uh, that will only get executed if the conditional statement in parentheses is true. So let's look at an example of what that would actually look like. We'll just start with a value of x that we'll use for checking our conditional statement against. So let's say x is equal to 6. And then we'll have our conditional statement. And so let's check to see if x is greater than 5. And so we'll say if parentheses x is greater than 5 curly brackets, and then if x is greater than 5, let's square x. So we'll say x is equal to x squared. And so if we run this code, and then we look and see what x is, we'll see that it's 36. And so the code executed like this. We set x is equal to 6. We then check to see if x was greater than 5. It is, so this conditional statement evaluates to true. And therefore, we run the code inside this block. So we take the value of x, which is 6, square it, and store it back into x. And so that makes x 36. And then we end our code block. So now let's see what happens if we change x to 4. Now if we run the same block of code, what we'll see is that x is equal to 4 over here. And that's because we set x equal to 4. We then check to see if x was greater than 5. 4 is not greater than 5, so this evaluates to false. And so this block of code doesn't get run, it gets skipped over, and doesn't get executed. And so x stays where it was to start with. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that this if statement is not a function, right? So we're using curly brackets to talk about the block of code that's in the if statement. But this is actually out in the broader program. It's not been placed in a function, and so everything that happens here is reflected in our global environment. And that's the basic idea, but let's look at a slightly more uh, real-world application of something like this. Let's say that we are estimating the mass or biomass of a plant based on the volume that we've measured in the field. We've done this just with a single equation before, but more realistically, the way in which we calculate that mass depends on the specific 
plant type that we're looking at. So we wouldn't use the same equation for grasses as we would for trees, for example. And so we can control this kind of behavior then using an if statement. And so we could say, set our veg type. So let's set veg type is equal to tree. And then we could have our volume. And so let's set our volume to 16.08. And then we could use a conditional to only calculate a mass if the vegetation type was tree. And so we could say if parentheses veg type is equal to two equals signs, remember, for equal to tree, and then our curly brackets. And then we could say mass is equal to 2.65 times the volume raised to the 0 0.9. And if we run this code, we'll get out a mass. But if we ran it with a vegetation type other than tree, then this block of code wouldn't execute. And so we can see that we're starting to be able to control uh, how things happen depending on the states of some information, some data. And what we'll start to learn next time is what to do in a context like this when we have values other than the tree that we need to work with. So that's the basic idea behind if statements. If statements check to see if a condition is true or false, and if it's true, they execute the following block of code, and if it's false, then they don't execute that block of code, and they have the general structure if parentheses, the condition that we want to check, curly brackets, and then the code that we want to execute if that condition is true.